Following the creation of the Petroleum Warfare Department in 1940 to experiment with petroleum oil as a tool for war, the British began designing highly innovative ways to unleash psychological warfare on its enemies, including a tank fitted with a flamethrower. Their reasoning was that if an already imposing Churchill tank with its 45mm gun and thick armor was not fearsome enough, a modified variant with a flamethrower would surely become the thing of nightmares. Simply dubbed the Churchill Crocodile, this tank replaced the original machine gun with a devastating device that had a range of about 110 meters. Powered by a heavily armored trailer that housed the fuel and gas, the flame projector quickly became the worst fear of any entrenched German garrison on the Western Front. In fact, the crocodile was so dreaded that there were more Germans that surrendered than those who succumbed to the colossal flamethrowing tank. Petroleum Warfare Following the Dunkirk Retreat of 1940 and the subsequent surrender of France, the United Kingdom was left to fight the Third Reich forces on its own. During these perilous months, the British Isles were partially isolated by the Kriegsmarine and the Luftwaffe, and convoys sent from the US carrying goods, food, weapons, and more were sunk every day by the Germans in a coordinated effort to drain Great Britain of resources. Rumors also spread out that once the British were in critical condition, the Germans would invade the mainland with simultaneous amphibious assaults. When the British intelligence discovered that they were true, the military realized they had a big problem. There was a shortage of weapons of all sorts, many of which had been lost during the retreat from Dunkirk. From anti-tank and anti-aircraft guns to mines and rifles, the British knew they could not stop a full-scale German invasion with their current resources. Fortunately for them, the one-of-a-kind Petroleum Warfare Department was soon created to provide the military with an unprecedented way to defend their island, petroleum oil. It was one of the few resources of which the British had plenty, and this led to the creation of the PWD, whose objective was to study feasible ways of turning petroleum into an effective weapon. While a special commission of the PWD focused on developing fugaces to defend the British shores, other members began experimenting with armored vehicles that could be fitted with lethal flamethrowers. Early experiments included the Valentine tank, the Universal Carrier, and even the clunky Cockatrice. However, the first genuine attempt at turning a conventional tank into a flamethrower tank came in 1942 with a Churchill Mark II. Simply dubbed the Churchill Oak, after the Royal Tank Regiment officer who made the conversion, Major J.M. Oak, this tank became the basis of the project. The Oak featured a pipe apparatus with a fuel tank placed at the rear. This was linked to a Ronson flame projector located at the front left hull, leaving the right-hand machine gun without any obstruction. Only three prototypes were produced, and they were named the Boar, Beetle, and Bull. The tanks were deployed with the Allied forces during the disastrous amphibious assault known today as the Deeper Raid of August 1942. None survived the relentless German defense at the beach, but the PWD still carried on with the project to develop a tank fitted with a flamethrower. The Churchill Crocodile The PWD issued a request specifying that future conversions would have to retain the Churchill tank's main armament. It also called for a minimum of a minute of flame with an effective range of at least 80 yards or 70 meters, while the fuel had to be carried in a jettisonable trailer. A new variant of the Churchill Mark IV, dubbed the Crocodile, was fitted with one of the flamethrowers, and General Percy Hobart was so impressed that he pushed the project forward. The Crocodile would become one of Hobart's funnies, the name given to many special tank projects the General was involved in. Thanks to Hobart, 250 units were approved for use in the future invasion of Normandy in June of 1944. The Churchill Mark IV was eventually replaced by the Mark VII, and they were delivered in early 1944. The new Crocodile used the same chassis as the Mark VII, and following the specifications of the PWD, it retained the 75mm gun too. 
only the coaxial 7.92mm machine gun was removed in favor of the flame projector. The conversion process could be made in the field with the conversion kit, which comprised the reinforced pipework and the fuel propellant trailer. Also, the machine gun was replaced by the flame projector, and a pipe ran from the hull floor to a coupling on the rear called the link, which had three articulated joints that allowed it to move with ease through every type of terrain. The link was attached to a wheeled trailer with armor that was 12 millimeters thick and weighed about 6.5 tons. It carried over 1,800 liters of fuel and five compressed bottles of nitrogen gas that could be jettisoned from the tank, while the trailer provided the crew with over 81 second bursts. John Smith, a soldier who served with the 141st Regiment, RAC, during the Normandy campaign, later recalled, quote, The fuel was the most secret part of the whole contraption, and we did not know what it contained. In appearance, it was a congealed milky white jelly. The Germans used diesel oil, but our fuel had the great advantage of remaining a compact rod and thus reducing the amount burned up in flight. Its consistency was such that the flame could be rolled along the ground into silt trenches or bounced around corners. In addition, it stuck to the target. Finally, the armored trailers were towed by AEC Matador lorries for long distances, while the crocodiles were moved on tank transporters. Reptilian Flamethrower The tank's flame projector had a range of around 120 yards, or 110 meters, and the flame was ignited by a spark plug that came from a spray of petrol from the external tank. The operator could spray short bursts of burning fuel into the objective, or spray it with fuel and then ignite it with a quick lit burst. During a September 1942 demonstration of the crocodile's projector, Lieutenant Andrew Wilson wrote down how it worked, quote, A little burst of fire, like a struck match above the nozzle, tested the spark, and the tank began to move forward. It went towards the first target, a concrete pillbox. Suddenly, there was rushing in the air, a vicious hiss. From the front of the tank, a burning yellow rod shot out. Out and out it went, up and up, with the noise like the slapping of a thick leather strap. The rod curved and started to drop, throwing off burning particles. It struck the concrete with a violent smack. A lieutenant then describes how over a dozen yellow fingers leapt out of the point of impact, making their way through cracks and apertures before engulfing the entire pillbox in fire. Then, clouds of queer-smelling black smoke emerged. An instant later, the flame shot out from the back of the pillbox, fanning like a blowtorch. The effects of well-placed bursts were devastating against German bunkers or machine gun nests. All it took for a small compact space to get lit up was for one tiny burst of fuel to make it to the inside and get instantly ignited by the flames. The British produced over 800 crocodiles, of which 250 were destined for the war in the Pacific. The rest began to slowly arrive in waves after the Allied forces breached the Atlantic Wall following the Normandy invasion. The Churchills proved an excellent psychological warfare against German forces, who refused to surrender in compact areas, such as trenches, improvised defenses, houses, and tight streets in the middle of towns or cities. More often than not, the fear factor broke the usual German discipline, and the garrisons preferred to surrender rather than get burned. According to a report from the Flame Warfare Committees, which analyzed the use of the crocodiles from June to October of 1944, German casualties from the flame projector were less than 500, while the number of prisoners captured who preferred to surrender surpassed 1,000. The crocodiles meant for the Pacific were never used once the United States decided to end the war with Japan with the atomic bombs. Nevertheless, the surviving crocodiles managed to make it to the Korean War in 1950, serving with Sea Squadron 7th Royal Tank Regiment 29th Brigade before their permanent retirement a year later. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of the Churchill Crocodile and its devastating flamethrower. Do you think it really made an impact on the battlefields of Europe? Stay tuned.